Hello, it's Maxine. Today I'm on a whim, <laughs> so I haven't put much thought into this, but I'm going to do symptoms of CPTSD. And most of it is CP or is post-traumatic stress disorder. But the C in front of it makes it complex. And the only real difference is well, there are extreme differences, but the main thing is that CPTSD is sort of like repeated exposure to abuse and or a traumatic situation and then uh, regular PTSD. <laughs> I've been saying it with C for so long that it doesn't flow. So PTSD um, is usually like a singular event, which I mean, it could still be just as traumatic as anything and still affect your life greatly, but um, they're both just a little different in their ways. <laughs> I pick a busy location, I do my video, I'm not even looking at you, I'm looking at an airplane. <laughs> my ADHD is like, oh, never mind, you don't need to do this right now, let's look at, <laughs> let's avoid, like how we did the first um, 26, 27 years of my life before I reached out for real help. <laughs> anyway. Um, so the first, I'll put the links below of where I'm getting this information from. The first is uh, just sort of saying a little bit of the difference of CPTSD. So the main core symptoms, values of it is uh, you're hyper aware of danger, you avoid trauma triggers and flashbacks with CPTSD or more likely to have difficulty regulating emotions which um, you know with me that could be autism that could be CPTSD like there's kind of a number of things um, feeling shame or guilt trouble um, staying in relationships so all of those extraneous um, hyper aware of danger. I think that's why I'm like constantly recognizing dangerous situations before others and like I've um you know I haven't been afraid to call the police at times in my life to like literally save lives or at least investigate things that I've witnessed and I'm constantly like hyper aware of my surroundings which is a good thing in some ways because it's like um for example there was this drunk guy who was about to attack me and I don't know what he was on but um if I hadn't been constantly scanning like I've done since a young age then I probably wouldn't have saw him coming and I was walking down like a really dark street at night so um the thing that sucks with that though is that it, like as humans we should be able to just go out and enjoy nature but I am fearful of going place like I'm not fearful of going places alone but definitely out into the wilderness or late at night like we shouldn't have to be worrying about those things and uh um Yeah, when I mention things like that, it's just like brings me right back into that place. So I'm like having flashbacks, which is on the list. And I get flashbacks a lot, like triggers, like it could be a word, it could be a song, it could be uh... my phone dropped. <laughs> I need to come up with something better. This is not going to work long term. Um, the worst part about triggers is that it has, because they come and go so frequently, it's like, it has just ruined some of the best times of my life. Like, it's just, like, just imagine you're with friends laughing, having a good time, and all of a sudden, boom, it just hits you. And it's like, 
I think the triggers must really affect things like when it comes to hormones and like happy hormones and stuff because if you're like all of a sudden you're happy and then boom something hits you like a memory and then it just <sighs> anyway um what was I saying about uh being hyper aware the thing about that too is it would just, before I had my own vehicle, I had to bike everywhere, I had to walk everywhere, I had to take the bus everywhere. So getting off work late at night and when you live in a place that gets dark after like 4 p.m. half the year, like it, I would have to walk home alone in the dark often and I would constantly be like checking around and like thinking the person behind me is like someone dangerous just um it leads to like paranoia and things at times like I can talk myself out of it it's not like I fully believe oh that person yeah they're gonna get me it's just that horrible overwhelming feeling that I'm in a dangerous situation and uh so avoiding trauma triggers I feel like the biggest indication of me avoiding trauma triggers is not putting myself out there when it comes to dating and missing out in life in that way because I'm like it like from past experience but then also having an abusive father growing up it's like well unfortunately I'm not a lesbian I wish I was sometimes but my main trigger is my dad and so men I have a hard time trusting them trusting their word um believing they have good intentions and it's one of the main factors why I haven't like really put myself out there in dating and have missed out on a lot in life at 35 years old because it's um I'm just I'm avoiding something that is just guaranteed to be a trigger for me. Like, it's hard going into relationships where you, like, um, I'll, like, I'll, I'll internalize it for the most part of it, but eventually I might reach a point where I'm almost accusing or just negative thoughts that I can't talk, like, I can't, um, just, like, intrusive thoughts and stuff, like, oh, this person hasn't texted me back they must be cheating or like just irrational feelings and thoughts like that um flashback so like I said sort of about being you know could be the happiest day of your life and you might have a flashback um I think like a lot of the time I am like sort of a daydreamy kind of person where it's like even if I was like watching a TED talk or in school learning about something that was like really actually interesting to me. It's really hard for me to, I don't know if it's ADHD or if it's related to my CPTSD, but I will just get these flashbacks where it's like, I'm kind of like losing time in my life. It's almost like, it's like losing time to focus and learn and Wow, I picked a <laughs> really busy location. <laughs> well, I just like, I'm going shopping for a few things and uh, and then suddenly I'm like, well, I should just do this today finally. So I quickly write all this information down, but I'm like right by a bus stop and the mall and everything. But anyway, continuing on. Um, so as for CPTSD, different difficulty regulating emotions and how I said that that's could be CPTSD it could be autism um I think I had a lot harder of a time with that when I was younger I think I've been since I first reached out for help which was like in 2000 the end of 2015 I think I've gotten a stronger hold of that but there are times that um I can't help but like feeling extreme disappointment by things or um, 
more so my difficulty regulating emotions these days it has nothing to do with like small events it's more so how I'm just treated by others and how I immediately just want to stand my ground and it's like I just refuse to be talked to or belittled or bullied the way that I was before but with that I mean <laughs> you can't just go through life like acting that way because it ruins things whether it be employment or relationships and stuff but it just sucks that there's people out there that I don't know they have, feel the need to um just bring others down <laughs> I just cannot understand that like when I go through life I'm always just kind to people and I'm asking them how they're doing and making try to just be nice and keep to myself at times but when I am talking to people I, it never even occurs to me to say like to judge them the way that people judge me in like everyday conversations I just can't comprehend it but and next was feeling shame or guilt I feel like I lived with a lot of it before um I've been able to I mean while I'm doing this video is one thing but it there might be ways that I live with shame or guilt that I'm not recognizing. I think, I think there is a lot of shame and guilt. Um, not so much for my childhood. I don't take on the blame for what went on there, but, uh, I, um, I feel a lot of game, guilt and shame. <laughs> I don't know what I said for, um, staying in relationships and situationships and things that were just like really toxic to my well-being I always said oh that would never be me I saw that growing up and I'm like that'll never be me I'm never gonna be with someone who treats me like that but for whatever reason we fall back in these patterns and I guess at times it was just better being with somebody than not at all because my type of personality, like having autism spectrum disorder, having ADHD, having CPTSD, having anxiety and depression at times in my life, like having all these needs, it's really hard for me to just meet somebody who's like extremely happy-go-lucky and hasn't been through those things in their past and want to develop a relationship with me. Like people will tend to look at me like I'm more of a negative type of person I can be really really happy and um uplifting to others and really like go with the flow and really spontaneous sometimes but when I'm doing these videos or it's impossible not to be more serious so you don't really get the full picture of my mood and everything um trouble staying in relationships so yes of course um just not picking the right partners not um getting out there and exploring enough of what could be good relationships but um even when things are fine at times I can sort of self-sabotage good relationships unfortunately it's like something I've done more and more like more recently it's kind of like I'm not willing to put myself in I'm just not willing like all relationships take work like not everything's just so easy and relationships should be easy but it's hard to meet your exact people when you have as many freaking disabilities as I do Ugh. it's isolating but I know there are a lot of people out there going through the th same things but a lot of them tend to be hermits and want to keep to themselves as well so we'll never find each other <laughs> we'll find each other online here on YouTube <laughs> But okay, this next one's pretty big, so I don't know if I'm going to branch off on everything, but I'll just kind of explain. And this is another uh, example, and I'll post the link in the description that so you can look at the web. 
it's like one of those Venn diagrams where you put this on one side, this on the other, and then like what commonalities they have in the middle. I think that's called a Venn diagram. So it's CPTSD. Oh, this is kind of a video for another day, but it's sort of to explain the similarities between CPTSD and BPD. So I think the reason I was diagnosed with BPD instead of CPTSD is because there is an overlap of CPTSD, BPD, and autism, such as impulse, impulse control and uh, things of that nature. So I'll quickly go through this list. So CPTSD, intrusive thoughts, avoidance behavior, increased arousal, negative self-view, difficulty in personal relationships, loss of belief system, emotional dysregulation, BPD, view world in extreme ways, um, quickly change values or views of the world, impulse, impulse control, fear of abandonment, a, inappropriate anger, chronic sense of emptiness, disassociation. So I think some of the, my phone ran out of room. So this is going to be challenging to um, get through in a short period of time, but that's something I'll need to do is like find a way to have more space. Like I don't understand. I have all this iCloud space, but even when I offload the apps to iCloud, it doesn't help with the room on my phone for some reason. So it's just irritating, but, um, so then the middle, so what's similar between CPTSD and BPD is trauma, changes in mood, depression, suicidal patterns of self-destructive behavior. So, and you know, it could be very well that I have BPD too, and I'm like a little bit in denial about that, but it's like, I'm not willing to take on so many titles, and I'm really thankful that I do have gotten over a lot. I think I've gotten over a lot of my BPD um, symptoms just solely from reaching out for help and having that um, support at times, like, participating in a five-week program before which really helped me um take like learn how to um help myself in those dark moments and another thing is having that validation of that my childhood was just not okay and it wasn't as normal as people think and that um just um all of that so quickly I'll say intrusive thoughts so yes I kind of mentioned how at times like when I get really stressed it I do almost like it's really hard to say this but a lot of autistic people will develop schizophrenia in their life and I have had moments where it's like I feel like I'm about to become or I have had signs when I get like really stressed like with paranoia and stuff but I'm just doing the best I can to take care of my health and um hopefully that isn't something I'll have to face someday because that is it's quite scary um I know it can be helped with medication and stuff but that's like one of my biggest fears but I'm not going to give too much thought to it I just have to do my best to um avoid like, people don't realize that things like alcohol and stuff can, um, bring that out of people, like, permanently. So, you know, I don't drink, I don't do drugs, I'm trying to avoid my food sensitivities, I'm trying to lose weight, I'm trying to do low carbs, so I'm just trying to do the best I can to hopefully avoid that, um, avoidance behavior. So, yes, I was pretty much in denial about having problems for <laughs> till I was 26, 27 when I first got help due to like an actual mental breakdown. Had to get to that point to be able to get help for myself. And that was like 
about 10 years ago now so like nine years ago so um There are things still I do that's sort of like avoidance, like I've learned about my disabilities, but I haven't given it full, like I haven't really deep dived into all the education, like I couldn't tell you all of this list myself because I haven't done the work yet, because sometimes for your well-being, avoidance is, like it can be helpful in some ways. <laughs> but it's not helpful when it comes to avoiding till your problems get so extreme that you it leads to like a breakdown, which it did for me. Um, increased arousal, I don't exactly know if they mean just sexual or like heightened awareness, but that is kind of goes with autism as well, like heightened arousal to sights, sounds, smells and everything negative self-view. I think I think a lot more positively about myself now since I've gotten help back in 2015. It took a while but definitely in these last few years and learning about CPTSD and autism especially and you know the things I have accomplished like the number one thing was like having my home daycare. I do take pride in myself and I don't think people with extreme negative self you can kind of do those sorts of things. I mean, sometimes you can, you can have extremely negative views and you're still one of those people that are constantly doing stuff for others and making sure everyone else is okay and kind of neglecting yourself. But some of these things I'm beginning to get better at. Difficulty in personal relationships. Yes, I have talked about that a lot. Um, loss of belief system that is something for sure i mean i grew up christian or i was baptized apparently we were catholic <laughs> but nothing was ever consistent and then when i saw just how apparently my dad is a man of god like a whatever follower of god and and how so much abuse and so much sin like it just kind of loses all meaning, you know? Like a lot of people who are these religious people are extremely judgmental and they're not, you're supposed to be loving if you're a Christian, in my opinion. You're supposed to be a loving and accepting of others and wanting to help people. But it seems like a lot of people with religious views are only dragging others down and quite selfish in my opinion. <laughs> but obviously I haven't seen everyone in the world. I know there are amazing people out there doing the things to help others, but just in my little 35 years of life, it's been kind of scary, you know, like how religion is used to kind of control populations and the history of religion and how it's destroyed other cultures. And so, yes, I've definitely lost I have more of a spiritual sort of, um, I don't know what, like type of religion, still figuring it out, but emotional dysregulation. So I've talked about how it could be also linked to autism and, um, these videos aren't good when I'm rushing and it's so noisy and stuff. But now that I've gone this far, I can't just stop it. I have to finish. That's another thing with my autism. It's like I hate not finishing what I'm finally set out to do. So the in-between again was between BPD and CPT. My um, phone really doesn't want me to complete this video today. So I have to quickly rush, but... Uh, where was I? I think I'll go back to BPD quickly. So, um, uh, belief system, most general, uh, yeah, BPD. So, view the world in extremes. I think yes and no, I can at times, whether it be political, religious, like I just said, and but I can see the good too. I don't just, you know, how people say, like, all people or the world is a dumpster fire or like people are garbage or whatever like I just um 
I hold on. I try to see the good in things at the end of the day. <laughs> um, quickly change values. So that's kind of funny as I'm saying. Um, not core values. Like I don't change. I don't completely change myself and my beliefs. I've been pretty consistent for the like as long as I can remember. Um, you know, when it comes to like human rights, especially women's rights, gay rights, everything. Impulse control. I uh, used to have a lot harder of a time. This is something I've really began to master because um, like I said, I've beaten my eating disorders in this past year and a half. I'm gradually losing weight for the very first time in my life. I've ended a lot of un unhealthy habits like using alcohol to cope with social so social situations. But I also don't have much of a social life these days, but I have put myself in social situations completely sober. So I feel good about that, that that's something I'm overcoming. Um, fear of abandonment, that is something that I'll probably have to spend a lot longer of a time working on. I just feel like anytime I enter any kind of relationship, friendship, work, um, in relationships, intimate relationships, I just worry that I'm going to be abandoned. But what I'm going to just do going forward is like, if it's for me, it'll stay. If it's not, it'll go. So I... Like, I just need to not get attached and it's hard because when you just love people and you see the good in people and stuff and, but things happen. Inappropriate anger. I don't think so. I think my anger has been appropriate, whether it's like reflecting on the past or witnessing things in like I sort of have that superhero complex that sometimes comes with autism where you like you just want to fight crime and <laughs> and you just don't agree with some things and and um, chronic sense of emptiness no I don't feel like I'm chronic like I think a lot of these I did have before but this was like early like 2015 and before that like I haven't had suicidal thoughts or anything ever since officially getting help at the end of 2015 so thank god so that's why a lot of my BPD symptoms are no longer um but I always kind of felt like it wasn't the right diagnosis long ago too because like, especially, I don't know why this isn't really in here, but the self-harm usually comes with BPD. And thankfully that hasn't been something, there, like, not physically, but there are various forms of self-harm, whether it's, like, um, self-destructive behavior or, like, um, um, what's that word? When relationships, like, kind of self-sabotaging in relationships and more but thankfully and I'm really sort of the people that go through that um but self-harm hasn't been something that I've participated in um I had one attempt when I was young really young and I would have done it in a way that was a, um anyway that's a, another conversation for another day, but um, the last is disassociation. So I don't ex fully know what that is, but I think it's like when people say you're kind of detached from yourself. It's like you're looking at your life and you're not like, I don't know what they mean by that. Like you're like a spirit or you're just kind of out of body, out of spirit, out of body. Um, I don't know because I daydream so much. I don't know if that's fully part of it. It could be. That's something I have to like learn more about. Um, like maybe not having that true sense of self as well. 
So the in-between is trauma changes. So trauma, yes, of course. This is the similarities between PTSD and BPD trauma. Changes in mood. So I don't think my mood really fluctuates unless it's an actual event. Or, well, with my um, sensory needs, like could be sight, sounds, um, things like that can definitely alter my mood. Depression. Um, thankfully, like, I don't know. I was diagnosed with depressive disorder, but um, I think like when I'm communicating in those visits that like even the psychologist is not getting a real view of my whole life and my th thoughts and feelings. But on the other hand, like because I have fibromyalgia and that is pretty depressing actually, like living with chronic pain. So I'm not keeping up with chores. I'm not, you know, putting myself out there at times or living um, the best life and having to limit career choices and all that kind of stuff. I guess it is somewhat depression, but my view of depression was the really lowest times of my life where I just didn't know if I wanted to be on the planet anymore. So like a lot of the suicidal ideations. So, um, but thankfully that's something. So as so suicidal was next on the list. Um, thank God for me. I know it's a struggle for so many. Um, I hope that others can relate to that, you know, reaching out for help has prevented those thoughts. And it's always worth, you know, reaching out for help again if you're still struggling, whether it be with friends, family, or um, professionals. But, you know, I have really scary stories, like, the hospital turning me away once because I didn't have a specific plan like I'm telling you I'm suicidal and I'm thinking of all the ways I could do it where it wouldn't be painful hopefully and because I didn't say I was going to do this specific action they just kind of let me go and I know others have had that happen to them and I think that's completely wrong like that just made me feel like they said I'm full of it or my life doesn't matter and go, carry on with uh, but um patterns of self-destructive behavior so um like I said so with my impulses and that is like a balancing act like I am doing that still sometimes in relationships that I make and sometimes even at work like if my stress levels are high then sometimes I don't know I still am facing bullying though at times unfortunately it's just a fact it's not something I create or make up in my head like I have just some really wild stories there and I thought bullying ended after high school but no I don't think some people don't change and they don't want to change or they just don't recognize what they do and what they say and how it impacts others. But yeah, so that's my list. <laughs> it's so hard talking about really hard issues and I haven't had enough caffeine today. I'm starting to get a headache. That's something I want to quit soon. So I'm eliminating my food sensitivities after this weekend and I'm going to try to quit caffeine again because when I did go a week without caffeine, well, I was having tea at times, which there could be just as much caffeine, if not more, in tea sometimes, apparently. But I'm starting with quitting coffee. Um, I felt like overall throughout the day I had more energy, like I didn't have those crashes that you get where you it feels like you need more caffeine. So I'm looking forward to trying that again and also saving money on not buying, going out and feeling the need to um, buy it. And, you know, they do say like 
heart specialists after surgery will tell you like not to have coffee anymore or some do so they say that for a reason it's, can do damage possibly I don't know I'm not a doctor just look into it <laughs> But thank you for um, viewing my video. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment. And I have been avoiding doing my surgery video, which I will do soon. Avoidance. <laughs> it's just a lot. It's going to be, it's going to have to be a video where I'm not sitting in a parking lot with a bunch of people there because it's really graphic. It's going to be a huge trigger warning for some people. Okay, thank you. Talk to you later.